So this is exciting, you know, um, and it's really a privilege to be here and kind of coming back on the Planning Commission, uh, we, we did a, a, a quick but thorough review and production of the town plan, as you know, and part of that was while I was in my absence there because it had been determined that a municipal planning grant wasn't going to be secured unless there was an adopted town plan and that caused the, a lot of the initiative of the commercial community and others to, 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 for the steam to run out unless we got a town plan. So we ran and got a town plan. We're going to have a public meeting on it and thank you for your help and contribution to that. We uh, then, as kind of moving forward to the Planning Commission, we asked the state and the Vermont Regional Planning Commission to, uh, or Sandy did, help facilitate, or someone on our team did, help facilitate uh, a meeting and they presented to us something maybe familiar to all of you uh, this concept of village center designation. This wouldn't be to the exclusion of any other possible village center. The most likely civic and or commercial core in our town would be Putnamville if any and this doesn't exclude that opportunity or in any future setting or it's, it's separate and apart from that. Um, there um, just a kind of digression, but an observation for me trying to read in light of the town plan needs. I saw, you know, several active steps in this community that many of you may have been involved since 2001 on trying to kind of bring it across the finish line, have a village center, have there be a calming of traffic, have there be a, have there be some shade tree, have there be some sidewalks, some bike path, a whole, the whole nine yards, and it repeats itself every time. Uh, and so we listen to the state, and there appears to be, and the merits of things always matter, always matters, but I'm going on the record to say no downside to applying for this village center designation. In fact, there are numerous upsides, and one exciting thing is in this document, just kind of because it can do it much better than I can, where's the one that has the, uh, the main one that you brought? This one here. Just grab that. Oh, yeah. and, then, yeah. and then at the back of it, you'll see some of the types of opportunities, not the least of which is the very same municipal planning grant that we wanted to go to with the town plan. As it turns out, our scoring for that municipal planning grant to get the feasibility study it is probably, if not entirely contingent, at least in part contingent on having this designation. That'll be a scoring factor that we were able to verify when we listen to the state and the planning commission talk to us. But at the bot at the back pages here, if you'll just look through all the sorts of things that can you can become available. Uh, you mean uh, uh, at the part that says 2019? Okay. Yeah, the after the hard week program. examples, let's just say the the last um, the last three pages back to back, and just kind of glance over the downtown village center tax credit, federal we have money, state historic preservation, cultural facility. VACB Outstanding Historic Preservation Trust. I mean, the list goes on and on, and number of types of things. It obviously takes work and effort, but for one example, in, in kind of casual conversations through the What's Next Middlesex work and the Economic Development Committee, it's apparent that there's a group of businesses in the downtown that want to associate and create. And if they were to be like a not-for-profit, they could lease one of your historic buildings and then become uh, accessible to renovate the buildings and get tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of dollars to do so to some of, some of the structures right here in the immediate downtown. So all that kind of is not really pie in the sky, but it becomes concrete when you actually do things. And in my view, actually doing something like getting your support uh, for the village designation uh, is really important. And it, it, again, I, I can't, we, we pushed, I mean, Sandy should jump in there, we pushed a bit to kind of try to figure, is there any trick here? Is it, does it mean a tax change because people who own historic property or something automatically? And we didn't get into the weeds, but for the most part, it seems like none of that would change. In fact, there is an historic designation already that we're trying to understand a little better about. There uh, is, did you say? Yeah, but I don't want to put that on this tape thing. I, I want us to find out more and be able to report back on it. But we're trying to make sure. In the town already? In the village already? Yeah, we learned something. At least Elias seemed to mention it. But let's, that gets me off something I prepared to talk about. I'm really focused on this designation and the potential it has for the town. And uh, so, let's see, a couple other things. Um, the uh, young man, Zach, who's come on as a planner for the, the Vermont Regional, yeah. Regional Planning Commission. Yes, thank you. Um, is uh, very helpful, and there's monies already there that aren't won't be the town's expense to uh, help facilitate the uh, fairly straightforward and simple application process. 
Uh, one element of the application is the select board's uh, signing on that you approve that we should pursue the designation, uh, but the actual work, like this map that was provided, uh, which in itself is quite detailed and incorporates many of the uh, parameters of the designation. In other words, you can see there's both civic and, and commercial and other designations colored into that. That's why I bothered to get the color copy from y'all. But anyway, he's there to help us get it done. And why is it critical now all of a sudden is that this goes in tandem with the town plan. And this will be the basis for the application. Again, being at the tail end of some other conversation, we have grant deadlines in September. So if we're going to get the feasibility study money, that should happen uh, next month. And we'd like to be able to work as a planning commission to, to get that grant and, and have the strongest possible chance to do so. Um, the only you know, it's Peter Long Distance. I apologize for the phone. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Uh, Thank you. So, uh, is the is the is the geographic territory that's going to be included in this uh, designation correspond with uh, the village district on our zoning map now, or is it different? I think it largely does. I haven't done that crosswalk. Uh, this is the this is the, uh, the V the, the the Vermont Regional Planning Commissioner based on state. Uh, so I, I want to say the answer has to be yes to that. What I can tell you is I haven't crosswalked it, but I can say this. I understand it goes from the Bare Roots building uh, to the edge, on the other edge of the Camp Mead property. Across um, the road. I think it's got that little... It got that little way. But, I, but I what just, about this part right here? Because that's outside the boundaries, it looks like. Yeah. yeah. So, because I mean, the boundaries of so, the village are red, and you're proposing this part here. So here's the thing: is we're not proposing. This is something that the, they generated for us, right? And and this thing can oh, uh, this thing can be expanded oh, depending on actual identification of commercial or civil civic use. So what we can do, I guess, what I want to do is make sure that the ability to answer you precisely with a very important and valid question that we have to assure ourselves of ought not necessarily get in the way right today of the approval, hopefully, from you to pursue this. To pursue that, the that, designation. No, that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, think and that, and I just want to be sure that to the extent we can, we're, we're consistent, you know. So, yes. so right now, I, and I don't have any of these maps in front of me. Hey, Peter, maybe yeah. I can scan an email with T right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I think, um, Peter, this is Sandy Levine, and Sarah will try and send it to you. The, the, um, Village center designation map boundary is a little smaller than the village zoning district. And the state explained that they really want to have an anchor of commercial property on all sort of corners, civic. Um, commercial or civic. So they're, it's excluding, if, if the boundary would be um, housing, that would be excluded. Yes. So if it, it would be the commercial areas and the city <laughs> areas and the spaces within those. So these you. are excluded because these are houses. Okay, I, I think I mean, that's the logic. Yeah. Here's, that's here's my thing tonight, guys. I'm fine pursuing this. We're not we're not finalizing this tonight. I'm just I'm just expressing a concern that to me it makes sense as much as we can to have what we've considered the village and what we've made the village on our zoning map be the territory that's incorporated in this designation. If for some reason it can't be, then maybe it can't be. But all we're all we're all, all we're saying tonight is we support pursuing, pursuing. attention, right? Okay, right. well, I'll tell you what the thing says, but just in light of what you said, I want to, we spent a little time, or at least I did, I remember being almost tedious on this, trying to figure out whether um, future expansion or growth could lead to an expansion of the designation. Like if it turned out that the size, despite our efforts to advocate for a larger map in this step of the process, in the future, if we did get something up towards the highway, you know, God knows right. what, you know, that could now kind of be another anchor. And, and then he pushed back a little bit and began to talk about historic precedents and what had been there and Who's what had he? not been there. He Zach being Richard, from Richard Amore yeah. from the state. Um, well, the Agency of Commerce and Community yeah. Development. But, but again, very flexible. But just recognizing it had to pass at least the laugh test, if not the fact test, so you'd have to have something that was there. But they'll work with us, Peter, on these boundaries. And if, they, if they're incorrect, I expect they'll expand them. If they have to be a certain more constricted size, as Sandy suggests, that sounds like what we heard. Um, yeah. 
Well, for instance, up, up the other side of the highway, we actually have commercial activity. Yes, exactly. That's included. You know, so to me... Yeah. That's not... Oh, no. Not I thought he was talking commercial about it on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's included. Right. It's newer development. Certainly, a good point to talk to work on. Yeah. And frankly, I don't know how we're gonna. This is really, if we get this, this will be, a, in my view, and I've spoken long enough on this. Is I think it'll be a, um, a, a concrete first step that'll give you an opportunity to grow, give us an opportunity to grow, and maybe access some of these funds uh, that that we need, so that town doesn't have to pay for them, and we can actually do some of these things that mm -hmm. the business owners say they want to do. So, is this state? Uh, register of Historic Districts, but other designation you're um, uh, you know, what I just learned like, about? Uh, I think it is. We were trying to understand if it's there. That's probably what, what he, it came up in conversation, Mary, not on yeah. this map. But um, anyway, well, I mean that's because the whole thing is more. I, 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 it's probably not. Let's find out. Let's get that answer later, like yeah. what is our historic stuff. But what was exciting in looking at the funding streams, and I'm not just a dreamer, I'm kind of pragmatic, but it really was interesting. We're trying to figure out whether the money had to come from the town. Like, was there going to be any plausible way in which you could actually get some renovation monies for historic edifices here without the town paying it through the tax base? And it seems like if you did have a lessee who was a not-for-profit, like a business association, that, they, that you'd be able to leverage funds through the system that way. And I, I thought that seemed like an interesting idea. Hey, Theo, can I just ask a really practical question for the minutes? By approving this and signing this, what is the select board committing to? It says the following. Resolution for Village Center Designation Application. And it's very brief. Remember, so Peter's listening here. Okay. okay, Peter. So it says, whereas the municipality of Middlesex, Vermont, is applying for Village Center Designation for the Mid Village of Middlesex. Now, therefore, be resolved that the select board, it says the legislative body of this municipality agrees to and supports the application for village center designation. Past this 30th day of July, and then okay. it has all of your signatures. All right. You just put your on um, the That's Did you get straightforward that? enough. Okay. Um, and that's it. And I'd love to entertain questions. I'm sure Sandy would. And we obviously can't, I'm not fully equipped to answer most questions tonight on this. It's kind of a new thing I want to understand better. By, yeah. by us signing it, does it does it mean that the this red line is our designated village district? I, I can say I don't think it has to. We're going to talk to the other guy on this. This hasn't been adopted. It all has to be filed. Okay. And I think a good thing might be to uh, suggest that we would provide to you, if it's not too onerous for you to look at it, the full application electronically at least before it gets submitted. So if there are any, maybe even in advance of that, if the select board would like that. Uh, we don't have a long timeline, um, but there, it, it, again, this um, application guidelines document, this, that included what I've given you, can, I can make copies of this for you. It's pretty straightforward. It's kind of this letter. Okay. Um, it's going to be filling up. Theo, it's, Theo, it's Peter. I'm sorry. We're on a really tight, tight schedule tonight. Okay. Well, thank you for your support. Uh, are, 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 we, are we prepared to uh, um, endorse this resolution? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 If we are, would someone please make the motion? So moved. Second. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Can you Phil second? Phil yeah. seconded. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of uh, endorsing this resolution for the uh, designation of Middlesex Village as an official, whatever the right words are. Sir. Village Center. Village designated Center. Designated Village, 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 Village Center. Center. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, you want to start signing? Okay, so let's do this as quickly as we can. We've got minutes from uh, June 25th and July 9th. Yes. Move approval. Wait, hold on, Mary. You're, you can't move one of these. Let's make sure we got the right people well, I, ordered. Okay, so uh, I wasn't here. The Mary can't move the 25th, so someone else can move the 25th. I'll move it. Second. Okay, all in favor of approving the June 25th minutes, say aye. 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 Mayor Sane, here, can you guys pass this right? Yeah. Okay, move approval with July 9th. Okay, is there a second? Second. To Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes for July 9th, please say aye. 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 
John Demeter's resignation from the ZBA. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you that he is resigning from the ZBA, so as soon as you guys accept that, we can post it. And will we accept John Demeter's resignation second. from the ZBA? Hey, hey wait a minute, guys. Hold, up, hold on a second. Why is he resigning? So, what family? What, what exactly is the status of the emails? We just need more time to figure out what's going on? Uh, yeah. I mean, partly, um, Sarah and I were chatting early, uh, last week, and there's another vendor um, who we became aware of that um, I think it may be worth our consideration uh, to look okay. at some alternatives but it's something that we're going to need to look into a little deeper and probably uh, have a presentation or at least you and I um, meet with them for a presentation so that we can look uh, at what they have to offer versus what we currently have yeah okay Okay, no, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, so we're back to, we're back to John, uh, Senator. Uh, yeah, we'll shoot for the next, next 20th. meeting. Yeah, we'll yeah. shoot for the 20th. Yeah. I move we accept John Demeter's resignation from the ZBA. I'll second. All those in favor of accepting John uh, resignation letter from the ZBA, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I presume the orders have been signed? Yes. Uh, correspondent, yeah. Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission approval of 2019 town plan. That's pretty much it. The Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission reviewed the 2019 town plan and said, yes, it's good. You've complied with all the laws. Good job, Sandy Levine and Planning Commission. Yay. 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 That's good too. So, we're just about ready to have the that our uh center august meeting day yep yep uh, right at six o'clock right we get to be in our public hearing on the town plan correct so can we should somebody go up and check and see if there are people upstairs i put a note upside there but i don't think there is i'll look there i think the door was locked wasn't it i opened it I Shot rock. What does that mean? Oh, some sort of shot rock. Shot rock. rock. Yeah. It's yeah. Shot big rock. pieces. Ah, like how they were drainages. We saw it, you some drainage. That's work. small. So, stuff, uh, yes. as part of the, the reading the record of the town plan, I'm going to give you Jim Colby's letter. Yeah, I printed that. So, there's no one upstairs? Uh, we're, we're, waiting, we're waiting to hear. We're waiting to hear. No one upstairs, right? One person asking for air. No, there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> one person asking for air is now back in the room. Do you guys have Jim's letter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I gotta get my. So I think we'll just enter this into the record. I'm sorry. I'm What's your voice? Yeah. Like, oh, how is this changing? She went upstairs, lost her voice. <laughs> I don't know. I, I got oh, it. I read it. But I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. have it yeah. in front of me, but I read it. Does anybody else need copies? Yeah. These, these I just these. had it. I just need one more. Oh, here it is. No, that's captured. I didn't oh, have a yeah. chance to compare it to what what pages he referred to. It's, here it is. There it is. So can we just enter that into the record without have anybody having to read that into the record? I don't have any objection. Peter, are you still chairing the meeting? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you you have any objection? No, I'm fine. I'm fine accepting this letter as part of the record. Okay. Yeah. I don't Perfect. have a problem either. Man, I, you know, God, I think it is. I think it is what it is. It's the fact that uh, the fact that we have have no one no one there to attend our public hearing tells us that there aren't any strenuous objections. Well, uh, we do have C.O. Kennedy and Sandra Levine and I'm sorry. Jim. Yeah. Jim. Here. So I don't know if you're attending and want to offer comments at the public meeting. The Planning Commission submit a response to this. 
I can't hear one of the She's asking I'm talking question. to Sandy. All right. Uh, this is Jim Decker. I'm here mostly about the roads and trying to figure out um, what we're doing about the roads, where we're moving forward, what the what the hurdles are. Yeah, right fixing now the road. The public right. And, yeah. well, you asked. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. You asked me. So, yeah. I thought you were here. Okay, are you in talking middle. about any of the discussion no. of town roads in the town plan? No, no. Okay. Well, I, 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 <laughs> just in general. Okay, well, that's not what this public hearing is. Okay. <laughs> Even though we're sitting here, we just we just changed our hats a little yeah. bit in terms yeah. of what our obligations are. So, see, so, okay. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't realize you were there okay. and you wanted to be heard about the town roads. No, I'm more interested just in listening to the. This conversation. It's all good. <laughs> okay, thank you. We haven't adjourned, Jim, so if we finish speak the hearing, then we can take up your your comments. Don't forget, point. you also okay. have to pick you have to pick a date. Oh, we did yeah. pick a date. No, pick a date for town wide vote if this if you don't make a change to the town plan. Uh we don't have to I didn't pick think Carl, we had. Oh look at Carl's here for the yay. What is <laughs> happening? I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. Sure, Peter Carl Dupont just entered and he's on have a seat. Okay. We, we just entered your father's letter into the record. That's my father's father. father. I'm sorry, your uncle. uncle. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Jeez. He seems like your father. <laughs> I won't go there. I won't. Did you want to offer some comments on the town plan? Um, I. Not right now. I'll listen to what you have to offer. Did you see the copy of this letter? No, I did not. She CC'd you. Oh, yes, yeah, so she. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. I have any choice. Thank you. Anyone. So, so, Carl, do you have a comment for us for the public hearing? <clears throat> uh, right now, I'm just going to listen. Uh, okay. I. I hate to say anything. I think you guys have already been informed of the position quite thoroughly. Yes. Okay. Um, so, what's your what's your uh, what's your what's your pleasure, uh, select board members? Well, I I wanted to ask Sandy or Theo. Have you seen um, Jim Colby's letter? I only just saw it this evening. Yeah. That's same with me. So I don't really know. I mean, I was hoping you guys would have a position on it, but it's hard to do that with that when you just saw it. You know? Oh, I'd like to ask a question while you're while you're thinking about that. So he recommended several changes. Yeah. Um, the question is, if we accept those changes and amend the town plan as a result of those changes, does that mean we have to back up and go along in the process, or are those considered minor changes? Sandy, you want to come up here? That, yeah. uh, that hinges on the question of uh, a substantial change, I believe. Or Correct. is it a content, one of the two qualifications, content and something else? Content and form, or whatever. You know, if it's it's a if basically if this change is substantial enough, it does kick it all the way back to the to the planning commission, and then it also kicks it back to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. Right, and it changes. It looks like it changes the map. Yeah, to the map is the, the map. Part. So that's that's significant and changes the specific recommendation. I think regarding changes to zoning, whether. Um, uh, and I think I I don't know is that I don't have it. Wait, so in front of me when I when yeah. I looked at it yeah. quickly, it looks like I would consider it a major change. Yeah, it's a major change. Yeah. It is. I would say. So unfortunately, you know, we see here all the time. I know 
but it's a little it's a little late in the game for him to be asking us to make a major change now. So wait, wait, Leah wants to say something, Peter. So okay. For the record, I'm here with my chair of of the planning commission, and I'm a, on the member of the plan, planning commission. And we have a process, obviously, you all know, mm -hmm. very substantial, even though it was rapid, very vetted and thorough process. We reached out to every citizen who had a mailing address in the town again. Uh, for further input. And we read a substantial letter from Mr. Colby at an earlier time and dealt with each and every substantive item therein. Uh, and I think actually, I don't we'll go back, we may have made some adjustments, I don't want to misspeak, but we certainly considered it thoroughly. And the town plan product that was sent out for review was based on all the input through the contemplated process under law uh, to reach the conclusions that we did. Having said that, this is a living document. The town plan is not like a monument that gets locked into forever zone, right? It's not a time capsule. It's a reflection of the current circumstances. And it's a basis and a foundation for the work that the town wants to do. And it needs to do in order to develop its town. Because without that, we can't even have a town plan for which people could go to this lovely open space. So when I read this for the first time, I see provision number one being a pretty good, or statement number one, being a pretty accurate description. Maybe that's a level of opinion. I don't think it's actually terribly substantive. You could strike those, uh, those, those words, those sentences, and for me, not substantially. I'm just one person. Substantially change the document in any substantive way with regards to the town plan. Uh, you know, it doesn't it's really, I mean, we can look at him again, but he's saying he wants to lead it. No change in the zoning anticipated for this area at this time. You know, we actually dawdle on, on this, and we're on the record, but it's Sandy, I remember talking specifically about this because we were trying to say, what does it mean at this time and anticipate it? You know, we kind of, it wasn't even a very helpful sentence. So that, and then at present, no major, it, you know, whether it's true that they're being contemplated or not, this, neither of those sentences being deleted is anything sub substantive in my view. The next one is a very different matter, and there's a process that you go through. And one, I would argue, that there's a process that was afforded in the context of this town plan development, a very substantial one that everyone, including this gentleman, was able to participate in. Uh, so to come to the select board at the very last moment, uh, and perhaps not with any intent, but inadvertently perhaps because of the importance of the development in this area or have you to this person, somehow inadvertently or knowingly, I have no idea, it's not my job to assess, but put in, uh, an end run around the completing of this process, which is so terribly important. We need your decision tonight on this because because of the work that went into it and how it fits into the conversation we had before. Otherwise, you might as well kick, it, kick the can down another year. And will we ever And will we ever always appease everyone on everything at all the time? If that's true, we shouldn't be in this business because that's just not possible. We just have to be fair. And we've been Did very you raise fair. this issue earlier? You know, this so concept, I'd have to crosswalk. I don't want to misspeak, I, but I, the idea <laughs> is reminiscent of an ongoing conversation <laughs> about, the, about this land. And I think some of the aspirational stuff that he's talking about is sensible to me. I have none of my business. Sounds good. It's private property. You know, go for it. But, 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 uh, but so I, that's all I want to say. So I, I think it would be disappointing. Uh, if we allow that second paragraph to be enough, barring any other public comment, to be a barrier to your approval of the town plan. Uh, what I can say is this can come up in, because we are going to address the zoning again, right? We're going to go into the thick of it, and some of that is really where the rubber hits the road, literally, right? Town plan is a vision document, and the zoning uh, documents mm -hmm. are where, where you can or cannot do things. So I feel like we could address that in that context, and that, that's all that I'd like to say for the record. I have a, I have a question, Peter, um, and I'm, I'm not sure if Theo or, or Sandy can answer this, but um, I mean, there's no doubt that Jim owns this parcel of land. However, <clears throat> he is not a resident of Middlesex. So what kind of standing does that give him? We have for what purposes? Always allow, I mean, first of all, obviously, he can't vote on the town. Right. The death plan. Um, uh, is allowed uh, Input. property owners to be heard in town plan discussions and zoning discussions, but they can't vote on the on the uh, town plan or on the zoning, obviously, because they're not present. So, so oh, yeah, obviously. I guess I'm just wondering. It seems to me that we have one individual who's a you know substantial land owner who tries to insert his own opinion 
um, to manipulate wording in the plan that will provide something to his advantage. So, and although we're saying we, we, we give that opportunity to anyone who's a landowner, we seem to have one landowner who constantly is doing this. I was a little miffed. As long as I'm, as long as I've been on okay. I was a little miffed when I got the letter at the 11th hour, as you said, Theo. And there's been a process, and I'm sure you were inundated with information from this gentleman in terms of what he wants in the town plan. So, to me, I don't know, just personal, I don't give it any standing at all. So I'd have no problem if the Planning Commission said, thanks for sharing, round file. And he can put that in the minutes. Right. Well, it could be part of the, it could be, it could be part of the, part of the record, but that's sure. what you mean. Exactly. So I, I, sorry, your comment, if you want to just say something on the positive, like what we did as part of the What's Next Middlesex group was meet with some of the business owners yeah. over a couple times, and just in light of what you're talking about, try to create a forum where non-voting business owners uh, can uh, talk to the issues that are important to them right. and how they'd like to see the downtown develop, and, and, and just as one member and as a citizen, I welcome that. That's the only way it's really going to work, right? Mm -hmm. But as you point out, if this were to derail it because of this provision, that that's that's more than unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a problem with the process. I think we vetted a lot of this very, very thoroughly, and um, and I think we could take up the merits in the zoning process of paragraph two. Um, I don't really care about paragraph one, and the last paragraph seems to be more discursive and doesn't really well, have, that, a, yeah, right. doesn't yeah. have yeah. a change. Have a request. Yeah. Um, and if that's all you got, then that's less than I feared. <laughs> Those glasses are these. There you go, sorry. So there you have it. My laptop is... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it sounds like, uh, well, Peter, you're running the meeting. Sorry. <laughs> so is this a motion to approve the town plan? Uh, the town plan? For a vote. Approve the, town, approve the town plan and possibly. That's you need a motion to close the, the hearing first. The yeah. The yeah. Gym suggested, but I don't. I don't okay. care one way or the other. I move we close the public hearing on the 2019 town plan of the town of Middlesex. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Hearing closes at 6.15. So I move that we approve the town plan for the vote. As presented. As presented by the planning commission. By the planning second. commission in September. Actually, it's your version from July 9th. Because we made a couple of corrections. Oh, okay. okay. Then this the isn't the latest right. one. That's, that's, a, that's all the way from April. That's okay. With the, July 9th, you guys made a couple of... Right. So that's the right. one that's part of the public hearing. In fact, that's why you're meeting July 30th, because you had to have one that was no fewer than okay. 15 days. Right. Okay, so, so Liz, so the... And I what, second it. Steve second? Great. All in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Great. Aye. Any opposed? Do you guys want to set the... Uh, do you want to... Uh, we just set the date though? Or? Set the date. We could actually do it without meeting uh, again in August because this will fall. If you set the if you set for the town wide vote on September tenth, Tuesday, September tenth, that will fall that is day forty two, which is within the thirty day, forty five day window. What date is it? September tenth. Tuesday, September tenth. I have the I have the warning right here. It's not, <laughs> that's not a select board meeting, right? So it's a different day yeah. to come in. Right. It's not a it's not a select board meeting. That's fine. I'm just that's a hot <laughs> you just have to vote. Tuesday, that's an Australian. Second is a yeah, yeah, vote is September tenth. I thought she said oh. second. I'm going to what? So this is a vote where we come in and write. Every, yes, no. I want the town plan. I okay. don't want the town plan. Yes, right. no. Okay. Here's the warning that I drafted. Seven, 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 seven. So seven. Yeah. <laughs> but you can also you can also do an absentee ballot. <laughs> I, if, if the I mean, planning commission thought it was fine, I don't know. They didn't think it was fine, but I I 
I just uh, follow the law. Okay. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting it on my calendar for tomorrow. Okay, so do you, yeah. wanna, do you guys want to approve this holding the town vote? Go, I just lost yes. all my notes. Do you want to? I move we uh, set the town vote for the town. We warn it for plant. Warn it for a vote on September 10th. September 10th. Mary moved. Two seconds. Second. Okay. All in favor of having the vote on the town plan September 10th. Uh, uh, aye. Aye. Yay! Aye. Whoa! <laughs> it feels like it's been forever, right? Okay, pass our town plan. Okay, Liz, all I have to do is sign that sticker. Okay, we're, we can, we're now back. We have an agenda. Good job, planning commission. Good job, everybody. Good job. Yes. That's a lot of work you guys did. Thank you for all the work. I mean, Peter, if you want to. I hope it has. I hope it gets voted on. It will get voted oh, passes. It may only be 47 to 24. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Let's Peter, it. we're still have, have our meeting, don't we? Yeah, we haven't adjourned, so we can hear from Mr. Know. Decker if you want. Yes, we can, Mary. That would be good. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to join us at the table, Jim? Or? Ten minutes. I don't know. I, I just, I mean, honestly, I came here to find out more about our roads and to figure out, you know, what our opportunities are here because, you know, I, you know, I've been I've been in town maybe seven or eight years now, and, and, and you know I find our roads, you know, just I mean they're they're not they're not up to par, right? We're, you know we have problems with with how slippery they are every time it rains. You know things are like if you look at Brook Road, it rains a couple days hard, and you could slide off the road if so you know, on the edge of those things. It's it's dangerous. You know. If it's graded on top of that, it's it's deadly, right? I went up there the other day, and this is where this started. It was graded. Person came down the middle of the road, wouldn't move over. I was on the edge going less than 20 miles an hour, had it in four-wheel drive and a full-size pickup truck, and almost ended up off the bank. Um, that road was absolutely treacherous um, after that grading. So that kind of put me in a little bit of a storm there for a bit. So, you know... I've seen over the last seven years or so that I've been here, you know, the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't know if it's costs that are driving it. I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know what's driving it. And, and you know, I see mud season, you know, we, we attempt to do a road and it slowly deteriorates over time. Brook Road, when I first got here, it was just finished. So I might date the right time frame. It was just finished over. I know they cut top it over. It worked great for two years and then it's slowly bang, 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 downhill. And now we're at, like this year, it was a pretty, you know, it wasn't great. You know, the other road up over the other hill was almost impassable at times. And if you try to go, and I know it hasn't been worked on, and I know the road down to Montpelier is the same. So I don't know what it takes. I don't know if it's more money or it's different designs or different material. I've been told so many different things. I've been told we're using sedimentary stone and it crushes to, 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 to a small dust that works into the works into the works into the gravel um, and I was told that by a state worker that's done over 30 years working in, on town and state roads I've been told that by people in town construction people in town um, I've been told a lot of things over the thing I don't know what it is but I know I've grown up and I grew up in the state of Vermont on dirt roads and I feel like I stepped back into the 70s and I just you should have seen it in the 70s. <laughs> I was up in the 70s. So I imagine you're in Middlesex. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was like oh, uh, so that, here, I was right? in Portland in the 70s. I have a couple of comments for you. Yeah. Uh, I don't I just, mean a criticism of Vermont. I know. I'm not trying to do criticism here. Honestly, I just don't know where to go. Yeah. So we may not have to stick with this one. Yeah. Because it's not the right way to go. People who are supposed to be experts on dirt road maintenance and construction, and they recommended that we, when we rebuild our roads, resurface our roads, we would do it with crushed slate. Okay, and we did that for how many years, Steve? Oh, too many. Too many is yeah. right. Many. That's and Gary's we legacy. Quite, we did it for quite a while. And that, uh, decision which we made and we thought it was the right decision at the time turned out to be a terrible decision because what happens is 
over time, that slate is soft, and it, and it breaks down, and it turns into exactly what we've all experienced. It gets very slimy when it's wet, and particularly uh, when it's just been graded. I believe it was, and help me out here, Steve, two or three years ago? More. Yeah, probably. The decision that we would no longer, for all these obvious reasons, use Use Christ slate for resurfacing our roads. That's correct. That. We use we use we use state spec material on our roads. Right. So the, so Brook Road was pre that then, pre dates. Yeah. So that Probably, covering that's on there that's turning to clay is pre dates. And so let me yeah. can I ask a clarifying question? So like when we did east. Um, when we did the road like up Molly Supple, Molly Supple, Molly Supple. we removed yeah. all that slate, didn't we? We removed yeah. all that material, rebuilt the road, and, and, that's sort of and used all state plan. spec material for rebuilding. Right, okay. okay. And that's, the, as we're moving forward, those are our plans. Those are our plans. I can just, just finish my, my overview of this. So, you know, we recognize and acknowledge that that was a bad decision. We thought we were doing the right thing at the time. We, we took advice and it turned out to be bad advice. So we are living with the consequences of that decision and it's going to take us time to recover from that as we, you know, go through our, go through our maintenance cycle and, uh, and get gravel on those roads. So getting to your first comment, money is obviously a huge part of this. Maintaining our roads is the single biggest expense we have in town. It's the lion's share of our budget, the equipment and the payroll and the material and everything else is the biggest part of the money we spend. So, you know, could we do it faster if we had more money? Absolutely we could, but uh, for the most part, um, we haven't heard, we've heard from a few people saying that we should spend more money, raise the taxes, you know, do it do it faster, do it whatever. Um, we have not been willing to do that so far. I mean, we're struggling with the, with the flood and wash out and everything else. We are really struggling to maintain what we have. And this year, not not solely because of the roads, but largely because of problems with the roads, we ended up overspending our budget by over $70,000 just to keep the roads open. So. <clears throat> We, we acknowledge that at times the roads are, are very slippery and slimy and, you know, different, no different than the roads in the winter when most of the people in town now, now know that and they know to slow down. I know not everybody can slow down and I know sometimes the roads are, the roads are bad, but uh, we're, doing the, we're, we're trying to do the best we can with what we have is what I'm saying and we recognize your concern is a problem, and it's going to take us a while to recover from that problem. Well, thank you. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I'm glad to hear that it's being addressed, and it was addressed a couple of years ago. I guess my most focus was on Brook Road for one of them, and some of the other, I, mean, I, I know they're poor, and they've been poor for a long time, but Brook Road was one of those ones I saw upgraded when I got here, and it's, you know, and I guess that falls into that the wasn't, previous category. It wasn't really upgraded, it was resurfaced. Right. But it was resurfaced with yeah. Poor material, right? So it was pre that dated, um, at least the top layer. So makes sense. Um, and then you know, just a if we have a just a moment here, the uh, mud season type environments. We're talking about replacing roads and doing those things. Are there other approaches? Because when I arrive in other towns, you know, let, let's take example the worst road, which is probably uh, most road I drive on or go, go around, is the one that you come down Molly Supple, you make a left. And you head toward Montpelier, right? East Hill, East Hill Road. Mm -hmm. um, it's impassable, probably, in the, in, except for maybe a full-size truck during the during the mud season. You know, one of the things that I find that's really hard is that I used to commute a lot with a car, and I and I'd come on down the road, and the great the graders, that's a, you know, would grade the mud perfectly flat, and so I'll come down the road in a car and sink right to the axles, and not very fun. So, you know, I don't know what the best approach to that is, but looking at a road when you're coming at it, expecting not to be able to sink up to the axles when you see a graded road or a groomed flat road, it's kind of an expectation. 
during hunt season, yeah, it's tough, but you can, you know, if it's, so I, I don't know what the answers are. I've seen different approaches <coughs> where people groom stuff to the sides. I've seen stuff where uh, different approaches, and I just, uh, the one that we're grooming it flat is just, you know, I don't know. It just seems, it doesn't seem to make any difference on the roads. It, it stops the roads from warming up. Um, it it just covers up the problem and reflattens the road temporarily for three hours before somebody mud bogs down through it again. So it doesn't really help. So I don't know, there, there have been other attempts and other ways that you guys have looked to manage those? Well, well so, so first of all, let me back up and down and again, please, uh, please help me out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not our policy or practice to grade the roads flat. No. When we are doing grading in the summertime, our normal grading, not, not during mud season, we crown up the road. Agreed. The yeah. Road. Right. I'm not talking about the, the crowns or the grow. I mean, I think but I have very just just to briefly specific. touch that yeah. subject. The grading that we do uh, during mud season yeah. is literally to help people get through that section at that time. Right. It isn't fixing the situation Agreed. right there. Well, what I'm asking though is. Can so, we do things differently? Yeah, exactly. Are, are we attempting things something that, different? The, because, the mud season changes every year, and some sometimes that section may not be that bad, yeah. but the section just down the road can. The road. I don't even mean upgrading the road, but when you have a, a mud hole that's a foot deep, and you take a groomer over top of it, it's still a foot deep. Right. And, well, and That isn't exactly the way it happened. I would suggest that when we have one of these uh, situations in yep. this next mud season yep. that you go right along there with Paul or the greater yep. operator that's doing that and see what we do. We don't just grade it off flat so boy that looks good and it's yep. just a mud hole. Okay. We do not do that. Okay. That's um well, and you also put rocks and other we stuff put, in We put, kind of try to put out. stone and, and yep. other materials in to, to help mitigate that a little bit. Um, and we try to yep. do what we can to get traffic through without really going through our entire budget. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and I think that's what a lot but, of this is driving and towards. And I'll just is. clarify one other point that you had made, not yep. at this meeting, you didn't bring it up. But I'll yep. just clarify now, you had mentioned that we use uh, salt in our sand yep. and that's one of our problems. We do not put any salt in our sand. None. Okay. Absolutely none. It's, and that's right. I mean, that's interesting, but in it, you know, if you look at our roads, I don't know how they melt at 20 degrees, 25 degrees out there. So, but I'm not going to get into that okay, argument. Okay, I think that we've got to call this off. Yep. We need Peter, are you done. still there? Because yep. we have another meeting at 6 Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. No worries. We've got a, we've got a, about one, one minute to wrap this up. Okay, one minute. I'm good. Yeah. What I would just say in closing is, you know, we love constructive criticism. We love it when people come in and talk to us. We like to hear from residents and we like to explain you know, how we're managing to try to do this. this is, we all drive on these roads too, so believe me, we know what you're talking about. And yeah. it isn't that we're not paying attention. The, the last thing I would say is that the several places where we did a reconstruction of the road, and Molly Supel is one, and uh, by Ray Nickery, Sonny Chill is, uh, is another, um, we have seen huge improvements in the way the roads are. Those roads are. Agreed, 100%. Again, that's very, very, very expensive to do. So to say, you know, that the whole whole length of a road is just financially unfeasible. Can we, over time, which is what we're trying to do, pick the worst spot and go in there and reconstruct those worst spots? Yes, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, I agree. I just, uh, you know, from a perspective of somebody in town, you know, I, I'm usually pretty patient. As I said, I almost ended up in the ditch the other day and it kind of pushed me over the edge um, after 70 years here. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to hear this change is being made. I license plate. I didn't. I was too worried about actually falling over the yeah, ditch. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I get involved here. It, it is, it sounds like we're moving forward with different, different approaches and, you know, it's not a, and to myself, it's not about did it work this time? It's like, well, it didn't work, so let's try something different. And, you know, and if, 
and I hear that's what's going on. So that's a good thing, so in my opinion. So, okay. And, and, I'm, that's I'm all. Done with the job, but I'm sorry. We need to. Yep. We yeah. Need to start the board meeting because we have a board of No worries. Right now. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for coming in, Jim. Thank you for your thanks time. Thanks for coming in. Carl, thanks for coming in. Thank Jim, you. I'm very glad you came in. Thank you. It's really good. It's coming more meetings.